All right, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, a little bit different of a video today. I decided I should probably do a just normal day in the life. Um, I normally do like a whole week at a time, but realized that I haven't done a week in life in months. I mean, I'm sure I did it like once or twice in preclinical, but I haven't done it at all now that I've started rotations. And I really should do one, especially because today is my last day of internal medicine. It's crazy how fast these eight weeks flew by and you know, this is not the time or place to sort of do a reflection on that. But I thought that I kind of have to do uh, a day in the life since I won't have another opportunity to show you what a day on internal medicine is like. So I'm about to head to the hospital. It's a little bit after seven. Thankfully, I live very close to the hospital. Um, we usually get there around 7.30. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on IM we have what is called morning report. So it's essentially one of the teams will give a lecture, usually based on one of the interesting patients that they're following. So we have that this morning since it's a Wednesday. So those are always at 7.30. So we try to get there right around 7.30. Um, with the team that I'm on, we don't round until pretty late in the day. Um, some teams will start rounding at like nine. So when I was on teams like that, I would try to get to the hospital even earlier to see my patients before um, either sign out or morning report, just so I had plenty of time to write a note, figure out what was going on, come up with a plan. But since, I mean, sometimes we don't even round until two o'clock with this attending, I don't really have to do that. I just kind of get there around 7.30 every day. Even if we don't have morning report, I'll still get there at the same time and just um, start reading up on my patients at that time. So yeah, kind of the basic structure of today. I'll get there 7.30 for morning report. That usually goes until 8 or 8.15. I'll go to the library. Um, I will open Epic, read up on my patients, see if anything happened overnight, check up on their blood work, um, see if they got any procedures yesterday, and if they did, what the results were, if they're uh, released. A lot of the times if there's, you know, a CT or an MRI, they haven't been read at that point, I'll take a look at them myself, but definitely not an expert on reading those. So I usually wait until the actual radiologist read to sort of really know what's going on. Then after that, I will go see my patients, maybe around like 8.30 or 9, and then come back and just write my notes. Um, after that, once all of that is kind of wrapped up, I'll just be studying. Um, obviously, if the, the resident needs us to do anything, needs us to go check up on the patient, I'll have to do that. But I'll basically just be studying and then periodically going back and checking Epic, seeing if there's any updates on my patients um, until we round. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll check in later. like that I am done with internal medicine not really we still have two more days we have the OSCE and the final but in terms of the actual clinical responsibilities we're done I'll definitely do a video sort of going more in depth about internal medicine in general and this week since it is an exam week I wanted to keep the video kind of short and succinct which is why I'm just covering today. But yeah, today went pretty well. Um, this morning when I got there, like I said, I, I went to morning report. Um, during morning report, got a text from my resident that we had two new admissions. So me and then one of the sub eyes each took one. So that's always an interesting thing when you have a new patient. Um, there's, you know, a lot more work involved with that as opposed to just checking up on patients that you've been seeing for multiple days, you've already written a bunch of notes on them. You know, you kind of have a really good idea of what's going on and, you know, maybe one or two things change based on blood work or a medication change or a procedure, but for the most part, those follow-up patients are uh, not very stressful, not, not too much work that has to be done, but uh, the new patients can sometimes be a lot, especially if they have uh, an extensive past medical history, if they have a lot of different things going on. So that just meant my morning was a little bit busier. I didn't end up uh, seeing my patients until maybe like 10 o'clock just because 
I had to read up on my new patient, you know, do some chart reviews, see why they came in, um, sort of prepare for my own interview of them to try to gather more information and try to figure out what was going on. It was a pretty interesting case. Uh, the patient had a cystoscopy two weeks ago, tremors after them, which, you know, isn't really a typical thing, but they had got some antibiotics for a week and it improved, but it's still not completely better. Um, also, the patient had a very similar episode a few years ago where, once again, they had a cystoscopy, they ended up having some complications and becoming septic, um, and even when they left the hospital, they still had this tremor. So the patient still needs to have a lot of workup, but it sounds like something similar might be going on. Yeah, anyway, I you know read up on the patient, went and saw him, um, went and saw my other patients. They're both doing a little bit better then wrote notes on all of them. And then at that point, it was maybe like 11, and our resident told us that we wouldn't be rounding to the afternoon, so she was like, all right, go uh, go get lunch. Then after lunch, uh, did a little bit of practice questions, and then around 12.30, I went and met with one of my preceptors. Um, we have a few different preceptors, and one of them is specific for our note writing. So we have two write a bunch of um, H&Ps, which are essentially the notes for the first presentation of a patient, um, sort of like the new admission from the ER. Those notes are always the toughest to write because they have to be the most detailed, and it's honestly like a really big responsibility um, for the medicine team or, you know, whoever's team the patient is being admitted to because all of the consults and, you know, all of the other people, nurses, whatever, are going to look at that note to see what is going on with the patient. I know. Anytime that I have a new patient, the first thing I do is go to their H&P, just because it has the most extensive past medical history, it has all of their home medications, their surgical history, you know, uh, the best narrative of what was going on before they came into the hospital, why they came in, all that kind of stuff. So as a part of sort of our assignment grade, whatever, uh, we have to write, I think, six of them. Um, and with four of them, we actually like are assigned to a doctor to go over them with sort of one-on-one. -on -one. So it was actually pretty convenient because I had that new patient um, this morning, so I was able to write my fourth and final H&P on that patient. So around 12.30, went and met with him. I, you know, printed it out. He went through it with me, pointed out things that I could have done better, questions that I should have asked, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's really helpful um, to get sort of that actual in-depth feedback on our notes because documentation notes is such a huge part of medicine. Um, it is very, very important, especially when a patient has a bunch of different consultants. Like as the f attending, you might you know, be able to call someone, call the cardiologist, call the nephrologist, but especially as the student, you're never really going to get any direct communication with the specialists. So everyone writing good detailed notes, explaining their thought process, explaining the plan is really important for communication and making sure everyone is on the same page. So uh, that check-in with my preceptor only took like about a half hour. And then from one to two was just doing some more studying and then around two o'clock we got a new admission which is always exciting but sometimes they can take a very long time so getting an admission in the afternoon means you're probably going to stay a little bit longer um, but thankfully this patient didn't have too much of a complicated issue so um, it didn't take too long basically the patient came in yesterday they felt you know a lot of pain and swelling in their left knee they felt fever, chills, so they knew something was wrong. Also pretty significant, the patient had that knee replaced, uh, I think three years ago. And a year after their placement, they had a very similar episode where it got infected, um, basically became septic arthritis, and they needed to go in, clean it out, and then actually replace the hardware. So she kind of had like a revision TKA. So maybe very similar thing is happening now. She kind of knew what was going on just because she's already been through it. So she's like, all right, I, I don't want to hold off on this. I just need to go in the hospital. Um, by this time we saw the patient, ortho had already come around and aspirated the knee. They're also going to need to take some images, then do like a fluid analysis to see if there actually is an infection. Um, it, you know, pretty light 
likely based on the clinical picture the patient had fever and all that. If that is the case and uh, if the x-rays don't look good then she might have to go back to surgery again which would be really unfortunate for her um, especially since she's already been through something like this. Yeah so um, like I said pretty straightforward case so it didn't take too long and afterwards went back and studied for like another half hour and then got let go. Thankfully it's not too late it's around four o'clock right now which is a little bit early. Um, uh, my resident let us go just because she knows we have um, our exams coming up and we need to really study. However, I am super tired, so I need to go to the gym to wake up a little bit before I keep studying. I'm sitting here editing this video and I realized I never really ended the vlog. I think I was just way too tired and crashed instead of sort of wrapping up everything. But basically after I got home from the gym, I ate something, showered, and then was just studying for the rest of the night. Um, much all of the studying for this past week has just been a lot of practice questions for the shelf. I mean, that's pretty much what I've been doing for most of this rotation anyway is just a lot of you world um, but I've transitioned mainly to the NBME practice tests which have been really good and then I finished all of you world so I've also been supplementing with Amboss I don't have their full question bank I have like their sort of base membership which gives you access to all of like the information and like sort of articles on different diseases and stuff and then you also get I think it's 50 questions per month so I ran through the 50 questions that I have for that and it's good because I learned some stuff that um you world didn't really cover but yeah I mean that was pretty much it I studied until like nine o'clock then watched an episode of the new Percy Jackson show and then went to bed around 10. My video next week is going to be going over that whole week in general just because it was the last week of my IM rotation I'm going to talk about the OSCE and the shelf and all that so look out for that coming out next week because i have a lot to say about this topic all right well that is going to do it for today's video if you enjoyed please be sure to leave a like below and subscribe if you want to see videos like this in the future thanks and i'll see you in the next one